Hi everybody, it's Michelle and I am here at the Ginger Creek Garden and it is a beautiful day. It's about 70, ah, 70 degrees today and um, I'm out here at the garden. It is coming up on week 15 here at Ginger Creek Garden. It is September 10th. Um, we have just had two days of what we consider a lot of rain because the rain gods have not been very good to us this year and um, I'm gonna go check the rain gauge in just a second I did empty it at about almost an inch so we'll add that to what it says now and see how much we got but I just wanted to swing out here today and kind of show you what it looks like because this is kind of a sad time of the year when the garden starts to peter out and die off and we're learning a lot through um, gardening this year as to um, what to do next year and what not to do next year and how we can improve and do things better. So I wanted to take you around the garden a little bit. So um, here is what we got. Um, the zinnias, obviously, star of the show right here. We have a better way of pruning these for next year, so we will make sure we take care of that. Um, what else do we got? Oh, we got another star, a late bloomer to the, to, the, to the game, and it is our strawberry blonde sunflower. Look how pretty that is. This is a beautiful cutting sunflower. Um, it's kind of neat. It just kind of pops up and a bunch of different little blossoms come up on there. This one looks pretty awesome because that's where the seeds are. So I'm going to hopefully let that get nice and dried out and I can use these seeds for next year because man, I think I bought like five seeds. And it was like 15 bucks. So I, we have one of them here and then one down here. Um, something else that we learned, well, that I learned anyway, is um, the tomatoes. When you know you're going to get a bunch of rain, you want to make sure to go ahead and harvest any tomato that might look like it's almost ready. Um, there's a little friendly butterfly for us. Um, the reason you want to um, pick all your tomatoes when you're about to get rain is because they can split. If they soak up a lot of rain, um, when they're almost to the point of maturity, they will split open. So if you know you're going to get a storm and a bunch of rain, at least an inch to two inches, go ahead and pick your tomatoes um, that you think are that can just vine ripen or table ripen if you just put them in there on your table. Um, so these are some tomatoes that I would have picked a couple days ago. Had I known that the rain was coming, we could have harvested a bunch of these tomatoes. Um, what else? I did that at my house. I lost probably five huge beefsteak tomatoes to splitting because I didn't pick them before the rain. Also, the best time to pick your tomatoes is in the heat of the day when the sun is out and all the sugars are nice and concentrated inside your tomatoes. That's the best time to pick a tomato so that you can get that um, sugary yumminess out of a tomato that I'm actually finding that I actually like. Um, these are our squash plants. This is the second planting of our squash plants. And um, not so good. Um, I don't know if the soil wasn't amended properly. Um, if the damage, if like squash damage or bug damage was a, a, of these. But we did get a lot of powdery mildew. These we started from seed. And they are just looking very, very bad. We might end up just going ahead and pulling all of these out this weekend because we don't need them. Um, what else? Yellow squash here along this row. Beautiful zinnias, more squash. This squash, obviously, I don't even know what this is. I still haven't figured out what the real answer is to these things. These hard as a rock gourd squash things. All the peppers are looking really well. Um, these are bell peppers and hot peppers here. Um, the thing about bell peppers, you want to keep them in on the plant until they turn colors. You want them to turn colors. I only think I planted two green pepper plants because my seed starts didn't do so good. 
with a green bell pepper. So I only planted two or three green bell peppers. And those we, we pick when they're green. But we have some big bell peppers this year on our plants. Like, that's giant. As big as my hand. Um, so we're grateful to have a bunch of those here. My bell peppers at my house did not do so well. But I don't know if those are supposed to be orange or red, but we'll pick them. We're not having a lot of um, animal damage out here, so we don't have to really worry about them. But this one is still marbled with green. We'll let it ripen a little bit more before we pick it. We have a bunch of melons. These, these are gonna be really delicious. We got a couple there, a couple babies here. I just pray that we have enough warm weather to get them to ripen all the way. We have these orange honeydews. There's probably 10 on this plant. All sprawled out here by the Brussels sprouts, which I have no idea if they're gonna produce or not. Um, tomatoes over here. This is our jungle of tomatoes because we didn't prune anything over here. These um, Brad's Atomic Grape, they're tasty tomato, but they do split quick. Um, I'm not really happy about that. This is a good, nice, plump one. Um, and the thing that I have on my plant, oh, no, it's not good. Look at that. <laughs> it's split wide open. Can't eat that. It's hollow. The thing about these are um, they do have a great flavor, but you really have to control the water you're giving them because they do split so easy. This was our most prolific squash plant this year. Um, it was it was a bonnie plant from Ace Hardware. It did so well, and then towards the end of the season, it did get this powdery mildew. We did treat it a couple times. If we would have stayed on top of it, it would not have gotten this devastated. You can even see it's on the stems, the powdery mildew down there. Um, but we did leave that squash on there. It's about a foot and a half long. Oh my gosh. <sighs> I can't believe how big that thing is. But um, I want to seed it because this gave us so many squashes. That's why I want to reproduce that, that plant for next year. And then this is our Benny Codimo. No, yeah, Benny Codimo watermelons. Some of these baby ones split, as you see. Um, they split when it rains. I didn't know that. I had a couple of them split at my house. But these other ones, these bigger ones, they've actually survived, which is good. We're going to come out tomorrow and harvest, so hopefully we can get a couple off of there. Uh, these are our okra. Okra plants. They're doing pretty good. That one's the tallest one so far. We have a little baby squash there. That's good. This squash plant looks really nice. No pest damage, no powdery mildew. Um, you can even spray some neem oil on there to keep it fertilized and keep the bugs off. But um, we have our first sunflowers this week. Carolyn planted these lovely sunflower seeds out here and they're just now starting to open. We have those, those, look at that one. Beautiful sunflower. And then our pumpkins. I have no idea when a pumpkin is ripe, so I'm just leaving them on the on the vine. We'll see how big they get. I don't know anything growing. <laughs> I'm not a pumpkin grower. But I just wanted to give you a quick little tour of our garden. It's kind of nice to see the growth of it. Everything's done growing vertically, I think. We are just now getting um, stuff to harvest and pull out for the season because it's getting to be that time of year. I'm um, already sketching out some plans for where the garden will be next year. We're gonna double the size of our garden from last year, from this year to next year, so we can have um, double the amount of uh, vegetables come out of here. To date, for pound wise, how much we've pulled out of this garden is over 350 pounds of produce we have donated to Marie Wilkinson Food Pantry. Um, Marie Wilkinson Food Pantry has hit right around 2,600 pounds of produce out of the Marie Wilkinson Food Pantry garden and um, including our garden. So we want to double that next year. We certainly can because we have the ground space and we've been approved for doubling the space of this garden next year. But we're going to plan it better in our heads. Um, we made some major mistakes like 
pruning our tomato plants that were indeterminate or that were determinate varieties, we kind of cut the produ productivity of those plants in half by doing that. That was a mistake on my part. I need to do more of a labeling. I need to make sure that our heirlooms are next to the cattle panel so we can trussle them up so that um, rabbits don't get them because we don't have access to putting cages or um, wrapping a fence around this. And um, that's pretty much it. We're going to try to grow our green beans vertically next year. That way rabbits can't get them. <laughs> um, so there's a lot of changes that we're going to make next year. But I just wanted to give you a quick little tour of this lovely thing that has fed the city of Aurora and brought me and all of our volunteers such joy working out here, um, playing in the garden and pruning the garden and loving the garden and being a place of refuge for us to spend time with the Lord. So I want to say thank you very much for paying attention to our videos and liking them and sharing them. And hopefully we'll see you in the next video. Take care and God bless.